Hi, first graders. This is Miss Mitchell. I'm excited for you to do your very first Nearpod lesson um, because I'm meeting with so many of you by yourselves and in small groups. I thought it would be a great way um, to do our reading lesson um, anytime you are able to find time to do that today. So you can do this lesson anytime you are able to today. Listen carefully. Make sure you are in a quiet spot and you are ready to work. And there will be some activities for you to do um, at the end, and I think you'll really like them. So make sure you're listening carefully. We'll read a story together, um, and we will get started. So you're going to see my face through the whole thing. Sometimes you'll see it small and in the corner so that you can see my screen, just like if you were in my classroom on a normal in-class school day. All right, let's get started. So our objective, I'm sure you've heard of objectives in kindergarten. Our objective is what we're doing. So what are we going to be doing in this lesson? Our objective is I can identify story elements in a fictional text. So identify, just like we do in Saxon phonics, identify means to be able to tell what it is. You know what it is. I want you to be able to know what story elements are. You should be able to tell me what they are by the end of this lesson. We'll be doing story elements all week. So if that's kind of a big word for you, don't worry. You'll know story elements very well by Friday. And a fictional text, fiction means fake. So when we talk about the word fiction or fictional text, we just mean that that is a story that is not true. And those are some of my very favorite stories because they are all made up and they use your imagination. So let's get started. Today, your DOL is what you will be doing at the end. I'm going to be modeling that for you so you can just follow along and do as I do. All right, we are going to be communicators. Communicators um, share their ideas. When we're listening to all of these stories that are fiction fake, these stories usually are way, are not usually, these stories are ways for authors to express and communicate and share their ideas and what they're thinking. So we're going to find out how people communicate and share their ideas through stories. Also, communication skills we're going to be using all year. Um, you can read to communicate and take in some ideas. You can write to share your ideas. You can speak out and share your ideas. You can listen to uh, receive ideas. And you can communicate through your body. If I'm looking at you like this, I'm already sharing with you that I'm sad, right? So we communicate through so many different ways. And today, I will communicate by reading a story, and you will communicate by listening to the story. All right, our central idea. In an IB school, we always have a central idea, so you know what we're learning all about right now. And our central idea is we share our experiences, the things that happen to us, we share our experiences through storytelling to build understanding. So to help us remember this central idea, because we're going to be saying it a lot, is when we say we share, we're going to be pointing out as if we're giving something to someone. So everyone say, we share. Good. Experiences are things that happen to you. So we're going to do our experiences. Say it with me. Our experiences through storytelling to build. See that word? Do this with me. You're building understanding. Okay, we'll do it together. We share our experiences through storytelling to build understanding. Good job. All right, so there are parts of a story that authors use to be able to communicate their ideas very clearly so that we understand what they're trying to share with us. There are parts of a, a fictional text that are called story elements. And you'll see right here on my screen the word form. In my class, we do just like some of your kindergarten classes do. We say, form, form, what is it like? Do that with me. Form, form, what is it like? We're going to find out what these stories are like and what are the story elements or the story parts that the authors always use so they can share and communicate their ideas. All right, these are our story elements, our parts. Let's see if I can use, I think I can use a little pointer. Do you see my pointer? Oh, look at that. So right here at the top, we have characters. Say it with me characters. And these, I have a, just some 
pretend characters that you might see in a story. Characters are who or what the story is about. So let's see, I'm gonna slide this around here so that I can show you my whole self. Let's see. Well, let's see if it was gonna let me show you my whole self. I'm learning right along with you guys. Um, it might not be letting me show you my whole self. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so when we talk about characters, they are who or what's in the story. So we're going to do this. We're kind of making a little frame around your face to say char characters are who or what. Characters might be a horse in the story. Could be a tree that's alive and talking in the story. Could be a mom or a dad. So clap it with me. Characters are who or what. All right, very good. That should help us remember. All right, our setting. You'll see right up here where my pointer is. The setting is when or where the story takes place. You have a picture of a little house here to help you remember that the setting is when or where the story takes place. So when we talk about the setting, we're going to make a little house on top of our head to help us remember it's when or where the story is happening. So we'll say setting is, um, oh, when, to point to your watch, like when is it happening? Daytime, nighttime, two o'clock, when or where? All right, try it with me. Setting is when or where? Good job. All right, so we'll go back to characters. Characters are who or what? The setting is when or where? Nice job. All right, now we're going to go down here to the problem. The problem is something that goes terribly wrong. Do you see my picture of someone falling down? Usually the most fun part of a story is finding out the problem. What's going wrong? It kind of makes you worried and want to read more in the story. So we're going to put a big X for the problem. We'll say the problem is when something goes wrong. Okay, try that with me. The problem is when something goes wrong. All right, now looking back here, we have our solution. Let me move my face out of the way. Solution, say solution with me. Solution. The solution is how you fix that problem. Do you see right here where someone is helping a friend to make them feel better? Solution is a way that you fix a problem. So with solution, I have a fun move that I like to do. We say solution is how we, we take our arms like this, fix it. The solution is how we fix it. And I like to do that because it's almost like our little happy dance in the story because this problem is finally solved. We fixed it. Let's try all of our motions together. Make sure you're doing this at home with me. The characters are who or what. The setting is when or where. The problem is when something goes wrong. The problem is when something goes wrong. The solution is how we fix it. The solution is how we fix it. Awesome. All right, we are going to move on to our next slide here. Make sure I know how to do that. There we go. Oh, I don't need that slide just yet. So let me go back. I like how you're getting to learn this with me. Um, let me get me on the full screen. All right, so now we are ready to read our story. And I cannot wait for you to find out what our story is about. So I want you to click onto the next slide to find out what our story is today.